All right, folks, hopefully everyone can see me. <laughs> Sorry about the slight delay. Um, I had a few issues with uh, streaming and YouTube and all that stuff, but I'm here. Um, I'm ready for our uh, challenge this morning. I've got my hair tamed and I'm prepared to get spooky. So, <laughs> This is the way, Kai. Welcome in. Um, thank you all for joining me this morning. My name is Voodoo Val, and I am going to be your host for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge today. Um, we are going to be getting into creating information cards, uh, but the way that we're kind of twisting this for our um, Monster Hunter Challenge is that I am creating a bestiary page. So if you can imagine, our Monster Hunter has a tome of sorts where uh, they can go through and look at all of these different super supernatural creatures they may have to hunt down or track or something. And uh, we're going to make a page for werewolves. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I am a little late today, so I don't have as much time as I normally would. Um, so uh, I am going to dive in and go ahead and, uh, and see if we can get this going. One moment. All right. Hold on, let me send a quick message real quick and I'm gonna pop over to our uh, landing page that has our challenge on it, shall we? All right. Okay, so um, this is the landing page where all of you folks can find all of the information that you need to join the challenges. So we have behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. You'll know that you are in the right space um, with uh, the date here. It says October 26th um, to November 6th, uh, which is easy to find out here on the top page. Make sure that you are not in one of these ones below that has a different date altogether because you'll probably be wondering why all of the challenges are different than the ones I'm talking about and why the videos that you come back to watch have different instructors. So make sure that you are in the right date range. And then um, here you'll see that we have all of our challenges being unlocked every morning. Um, so if I scroll down through here, you can see we did one on inspiration boards, we designed a logo, we aged up a photo, uh, we created a business card, we did an advertisement mock-up, we did a cool um, shadows challenge yesterday with smart objects, and today is the information card. It says use selection tools to cut out a subject and place it within an information card. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to direct you here to the get started button so you can download download the starter file I've created and let you know that you can come here and watch the video um, if you need to come back and review it later. Um, normally now we would go through the Discord and check out yesterday's entries, but since we are limited on time, I do want to go ahead and jump into the challenge. Um, so I'm going to leave you with the Discord link so that you can join it if you like. Um, it is bit.ly slash ps discord. You want to make sure the P and S um, are capital so that you get to the right place. Um, Grim with the bestiary, yes. Uh, a werewolves, content aware wolves, what? <laughs> We're gonna be designing a page for content aware wolves this morning. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then uh, now we're gonna jump into the challenge. So this is the challenge number seven image. I've got the um, the little challenge spiel up here at the top. Use selection tools to cut out a subject and place it within an information card. And then we have an image credit to uh, Philip Pills who has got this really awesome uh, image of a wolf that I love. Um, now the first thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm actually going to create like a page like a bestiary page. Um, and the way I'm gonna do that is I am just going to paint bucket in um, some white here like this. I'm gonna grab my uh, tools, which I'm gonna bump myself over so you folks can see around my hair. I'm gonna grab my shape tool and do a rounded rectangle. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drag this out like so because I want this like so. Let me go up here to my fill. I'm gonna change this just to a gray for now. Um, and then with these um, live shape tools, I'm just gonna bump these edges in a little bit like that. I'm also gonna take this stroke off. I do not want this stroke. Um, so I'm just making like a rectangle where we can put our um, our, our wolf image. Maybe, maybe I'll make it actually take up, mm, maybe not. Maybe I'll make it take up like that much of of the page. Um, I'm going to bump this over and then I'm going to 
um, move it down maybe a little bit. Let's move it down. Um, and I'm going to put um, a title here. So I'm gonna use my text tool. I'm gonna make sure I'm center aligned and I'm going to type um, where, since I'm writing in white, we're not gonna see it right at the beginning. Werewolf, werewolves. I'm gonna double click and turn this black. And I'm gonna make sure I'm using my spooky font because I like my spooky font a lot. So we're gonna add werewolves. Um, and then I'm also gonna add just something funny here. I'm gonna say um, also, the off of caps, also see index page for lycanthropy. Lycanthropy. Um, hopefully I'm spelling things right today. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that like in in parentheses here um, because maybe there's another page um, in this in this book that has like a, a section on lycanthropy which would be um, other creatures that also transform into into animals um, but most commonly used to refer to werewolves so we'll put our um, our rounded rectangle up here um, and then I'm going to drag some text boxes out because we're gonna we're gonna just add lorem ipsum for now um, I'm gonna make sure I left align all of this so this is where you know information would go uh, for this page we'll add some down here um, and then let's see I might actually grab this and copy it and paste it and paste it just so that we have like kind of a full thing up on um, text here. I'm also going to do that here because I want this to be kind of as full as we can make it like so. We'll even drag this up just a bit. Um, so now we have like basically a um, a whole page of like writing um, that might have like information on this um, lycanthrope that we are that we are hunting. Um, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna bump it in just slightly so that it's kind of aligned. And then now we have like our informational card um, that we can use to identify uh, werewolves in the wild, so to speak. Har, har, har. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna bump this up maybe just a little bit so that it's like right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our wolf out and we're gonna put him um, in our page here because we wanna have like the uh, the image of what a werewolf could look like on our informational page for the werewolf. That font is perfect for, for this. I love it too. So this is the font that I actually chose for my, uh, my uh, inspirational mood board that we did. That challenge was the first challenge um, and it is called Mason Serif OT. It is an Adobe fonts uh, uh, font. So in fact, I could actually come over here to Adobe fonts, fonts.adobe.com and um, make sure that I am logged in. And then I can come over here, ta-da, and I'm going to go Mason Serif OT. Ta-da! There's two fonts, so there's a regular and a bold um, for this that I love, and I'm gonna just put this right in chat for you folks. Um, and I'm also gonna, I think I'm gonna turn the werewolves, I think I'm gonna make this the bold. Um, I think that would look pretty great. Now, I, I also need to kind of mess with the alignments um, for this. I'm sure some of your eyes are twitching, but never fear, I'm not gonna leave it like this. I will add a little more detail to it. Um, so, okay. Um, I have my page um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all of this right quick and I'm just going to call this um, info page because now we've created kind of our lycanthrope page um, and I'm going to hide it because we are going to select this wolf out of here. Now what you could do if you wanted to um, is you could just grab this page and you could drop it into your group. Um, and you could position it over your, um, your rounded rectangle 
um, and you could right click it and say create a clipping mask if you wanted. Then I could come in here and I could flip it horizontal and I could just place it in here. This is an option. This is an okay option. This is totally fine to do. Um, however, if you would like to add more of a background to it, so we have this version. I'm going to leave that just like that because that is actually pretty good looking. Um, I could grab a uh, uh, kind of a paper texture here, um, make sure I'm not above any of my text. Um, and I could throw a paper texture over the top of this um, and we will kind of put it on a blending mode um, just to make it look, this is a multiply, I actually like this, just to make it look like it's some kind of page. Um, or what we could do is I'm going to duplicate this uh, wolf image, I'm gonna select my image and my rounded rectangle, group them together and hide them underneath. So now I'm just working with this with this wolf. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is I am going to dive back into our selection tool. So if I go select and mask, we did use some of these tools yesterday, but I would like to touch on some of the newer um, and other things that are in this because yesterday we did like the refine hair, but now what we can do is I'm gonna grab like the, um, the selection rectangle here and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drag it over and it does an okay job especially with this this is a pretty dark picture with a lot of teeny teeny tiny little details um, and it works okay um, but if you ever find that you're using the selected mask tools and um, your first initial pass at this doesn't really work that's totally fine what we can do is come in here with the brush tool um, and we can uh, kind of add to our selection a little bit if we want um, which is is very easy to do um, but the thing about this is if since we already have worked on the um, the refine hair uh, tool here in the selection tools um, I didn't want to cover the same tool twice so I'm kind of going to show how I would go about getting the exact same uh, effect if I'm not using that tool so you know I come around here um, and I would you know kind of clean this up but the thing is is when I cut this out it's still gonna have like kind of a hard shape around it it's not really gonna be soft and kind of going around the shape of hair like I like even though I've come in and I've you know put his snout in and everything so one of the things that I can actually do um, is I can come in uh, with some of these tools here that you'll see on the side that I mentioned yesterday, but we did not go over. Um, and I can actually do kind of a shift edge a little bit if I want. I can turn it up, I can turn it down um, to kind of bring it out. I'm gonna kind of turn it down just a little bit just to blur it. Um, we can mess with the contrast a little bit, which is in, in a way to me is in a way it's kind of like a sharpen. It kind of brings everything super close into the lightest or darkest edge. Um, but the feather um, is where things um, get a little more interesting because the feather is pulling it kind of in uh, from the harsh edge that we've selected um, or you can also smooth it and smoothing is really nice um, because it it keeps it to the borders of where you have selected um, with this mask um, and just softens it a little bit and you can also um, mess with the radius um, if you like and kind of bring it in now I'm not really particularly worried about um, coming in and making everything extra extra smooth um, and getting around every teeny tiny little hair detail because this is going on a page and not really um, going uh, into a I don't know how, how you would say it. Like yesterday when we were working um, with selection tools, we were making sure that we selected all of the hair so that it looked like a real um, uh, piece of like a real image of an animal kind of like skating across the street like a photograph um, but I kind of want this to look more like um, an image that's just placed into like an old tome an old book so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that yes I like this I'm gonna come down here um, and I want to export to or output to new layer with layer mask I'm gonna say okay and it's gonna hide our layer um, and now I'm going to transform this so that it kind of reaches the borders of our piece here just so that it's kind of like poked in and what I might also do is um, come back later and mess with the text so the text kind of flows around him a little bit um, so we can do that and then what I can do is I can come up into our filters go into filter gallery and we can add if we want to 
kind of a I mean, we could do like cross hatch or dark strokes. We could go into um, just like something that makes it look like it's, let me see if I can zoom out. Uh, well, that's actually, we're selected on our mask. Let's make sure we're selected on our image. Um, so we can come into, uh, honestly, we could use neural filters. We could go into neural filters um, and see what we have, like go into like a style transfer. Let's see what that, what they have um, in style transfer for us. We can click one of these images um, and see what it gives. It's gonna, it's gonna do a little bit of loading. Um, uh, and then we can, uh, kind of see if we can trans, there we go. That's actually kind of cool. That's actually neat. Um, we've got a few minutes here so we can, Ooh, I like that. So we can kind of like leave this. It almost looks like a painting, um, on the edge here. I'm just going to say, okay. Cause I like that. Um, and it kind of makes it look like someone has done like a watercolor or like a gouache painting, um, on the edge here. Um, and then, like I said, I would make sure that the, um, the image or the, the text kind of goes around. Um, or what I could do, um, is I could come in here, I could duplicate this rounded rectangle. Um, and drag this up here and maybe um, I'll just do the same thing here. Maybe I'll just do a clipping mask um, if I if I can. Oh, that's because that's the other layer. Let's let's bring this down. Let's hide that. Let's do a clipping mask with this one um, and then maybe I will uh, make him a little smaller and put him right there. Um, I think that looks pretty cool, um, if I do say so myself. Um, and then what I would like to do is maybe drag this underneath the old paper just to kind of give it, ah, there we go, um, a little something something. Um, and in our, let's see, we have like a couple more minutes. Something that I would also like to do that I think would be really cool um, is if we grabbed um, a my ellipse tool and I drag out something like this. Um, let's do a fill in white um, and let's do no stroke. I don't want a stroke, anti-stroke. Um, and then let's actually, oops, let's actually transform this and put this here. So we can have like a moon behind our, uh, our wolf. I don't know if we should, make it ah we could we could do that we could like kind of have it because it, it blends in because it's white it does blend in um with the with our background here um that could be kind of interesting we could you know experiment with like kind of just breaking the border of this entire shape um but i i think maybe i'm actually going to keep it small just so it's obvious what that is for now um yeah there is our our werewolf kind of howling at the moon. I'm going to make sure I don't have a tangent here with the, with it touching the edge of his snout. Um, and that kind of looks neat. Um, so then we have our, our illustrative werewolf, um, uh, image with a moon with all of our information um which it just kind of looks with the lorem ipsum it looks like it's latin um and then we have our title so that is how i would start kind of creating an informational page this is our bestiary page for lycanthropy and werewolves um thank you all so much for joining me i really appreciate it sorry that i was a little late i was having some technical difficulties but i think we got everything in that we needed to go over so happy designing everyone and i will see you tomorrow morning